This is one of the early engines, number one, um, and these are the early, earlier cars. It's not a Holman car, probably before Holman car was done. This is probably 1908. Melly Mar Depot when it was nothing. And now it's a restaurant, of course. Uh, Valley Mar, and this picture is way up here. And the cut, the cut is here, and the depot is somewhere up here. Uh, Nick's is right here, and the hotel is up here. Uh, this is the rock bunker from this location. And notice that hill is intact. At this point, I think the hill is like mm, that. <laughs> and this is the Rockaway Depot at this point. The tracks curve sharply out, and below the camera is Point Rockaway. Rockaway Beach Depot. Uh, point Rockaway. This, at this point, the uh, passengers were often drenched by breakers breaking over the rocks, and they would ride in the open observation car, and sometimes the conductor would have fun and not tell people, because, <laughs> and they would, they would come in soap. From the Rockaway point around this Right here is the tracks, and you get down on the beach all the way up through here is the track. That's that hill near the Pedro Depot, <coughs> Linda Mar Shopping Center, Kathleen Manning's shop. <laughs> <coughs> Interesting that there was, at this point, there was a Y. This makes this before. Uh, the middle of 1908. This has to be earlier than that because they had a, a Y where they turned the trains around because this was the end of the line. The tunnel had not been constructed or completely constructed at this point. And they turned the trains and the tracks went up quite a ways up Crespi. So, it's interesting to note that this was probably the Tobin estate here. I don't see Danman's, uh, uh, but I don't see the depot, because it's not there. The Peter Point depot hadn't been built yet. There it is after they built it, and of course they put the sign heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> Santa Cruz is pointing north. Uh, Oops. So this, pay attention to these abalone shells and in the pillars, because it's pretty interesting. There it is today. There's the abalone shells, the pillars. Wow. The roof line, I'll go back to interesting. When I was younger, the roof line was like that. <clears throat> it was very, and it, had, it was wood, in, in between the pillars was wood. And now they've made it stucco and changed the roof to a standard pitch and standard no curve. But it's still the depot. Past the depot, we're heading south again. Um, this practice didn't last long with the open cars. Um, these people were actually going to Granada. This is the late, latter part of 1908. And they're heading to Granada to look at property. They got a free ride and a, and a box lunch to go down and look at property. But it's amazing no one was killed because they had this steep cut in the mountain is pretty new. and the rubble was still falling and the tunnel was new. And they, these guys, looks like they changed their mind and were walking <laughs> back. 
there, just before the tunnel, the, the, you can see the, what uh, they call that Point Rogers after the engineer on the uh, railroad map. Uh, these are some early cars and the track is bad. This may be later, uh, they had an old truss rod car and, and pretty poor track. They didn't even spike every tie for years. And you can see there's some of them have tie plates and most do not. So everything was, you know, on a shoestring. This is the south end of the tunnel. They've just finished the, the hole. And this is uh, probably early 1908 or late 1907. This is after that tunnel was finished. They made it for a double track. And uh, Ransom and Crummy Construction Company built this rock bunker. And it was to take advantage of the falling rocks from double slide. <clears throat> the rocks would fall down here and they'd toss them into the bunker and right into the car. <laughs> it, was, it was simple. Brilliant. You know, just, it was just plain gravity. The only problem is there was too much gravity. <laughs> wow. Now this is an interesting part of this. These people are actually walking up the trail over the slide over the and onto another trail you can see people back there going around that point to the other 340 feet to the other end of the tunnel to catch another train you really have to be desperate to get to san francisco <laughs> and they must have had free beer so I'll go back just to show you the trail. There's the trail. That was built when they were making the tunnel so people could get around. And, and that, uh, the later shot, it's still there. You can barely see back there, but they're going. Um, this look on her face, if you, it, it's like, I'm not going. <laughs> you know? It's a cra crazy idea. And this is the tunnel, the south portal. And this has been, they just rock, put uh, rubble and rock up the other side. So it was a two track tunnel down to one track now in 1919, a year before they abandoned the line. This is after abandonment. What's interesting, you can't really see, that, that might have been where the trail was. But, this is what it looked like. And then later they dynamited the ends to keep rum runners from storing their contraband in the tunnel. Another shot looking north, but further south, is shows the trestle work in the side of the cliff. And this on the map, the Ocean Shore official map says that you can't we can't tell you where the track goes here because it changes every year. <laughs> so it says it's subject to change or something like that. <clears throat> Further south is a, a construction camp in the early part of the line, um, possibly um, early 1908 in the construction car. And this is the cut you can still see at uh, I think that's Gray Whale Cove below there. The highway goes this way to here. Uh, and this, you, it's, you can still see if the tunnel people haven't wiped it out. I think they've dumped a lot of debris around there. I don't know if anybody's been there, but it's, it looks like on the internet photos that it's changed a lot. This is uh, Jim Norris. Thank you for the photo. <clears throat> looking uh, north through Green Canyon, that same cut I had a tank and later had two tanks. This is an earlier shot of a beautiful little Baldwin number four, <clears throat> which went to the Southern Division pretty early, so 
This is a, a nice early shot. Here's the double tanks later, putting the water in the tank. The fireman looks like he's had a rough day. He's pretty dirty. Uh, further south is the Martini Creek trestle being built, and that's just north of uh, Montero. The current highway goes right here, same place. There's the cut, and the trestle is about here. This shot is at um, Montero. The depot is there. That's the fill that you can still see from the highway. The highway goes this way uh, over here. You can look e uh, east and see this. At one time, it had a white picket fence. I don't know if it still does. It's a white fence. This is the sand pit at McNee. They took uh, sand from the beach and loaded it into the gondola, the cars here. You can see the two cars. They had almost a, uh, like a model train, you know, about a half a circle of track. And eventually that uh, washed out. But they took a lot of sand out of there. I think it was uh, a keystone and EB&A all stone both worked out at different times. Keystone sand. Uh, this continues on past here to Fairlawn. This is the cut, I mean the fill coming up the grade to Montero Depot, which is about where the camera is. And this is, of course, the, uh, and I can't see it on here, but I thought I saw the road, you know, coast highway map. Maybe that's it back there. Montero with uh, a lot of people. And I think in those days, being in the hat business was probably pretty good. <laughs> um, and, Carl Wagner developed this uh, Montero as a uh, colony for artists and patrons of the art. And uh, that's, there's a story while Keen Miller came over and they planted a uh, tree, I think it was a redwood, and uh, the tree died. So that's kind of uh, apropos. As uh, when Montero died and of course came back. This is the shot that shows the fireway coming down here. That's Martini Creek, and it actually shows the sand pit. See the machinery in, the, in here. And this was made to, uh, of course, sell property. And it shows that Fairlawn goes way past Montero and maybe about the size of Berkeley. It's a little bit exaggerated. There's the main part of Fairlawn. And this is what it really looked like. The Link Hotel, the Vesta Post Office, and of course the depot and the northbound passenger train. And that siding is the site of the freight depot, which is in this this shot. There's the freight depot and the freight depot, the passenger depot, Link Hotel, and I'm not sure what that is. Somebody probably knows. Further down south we find Moss Beach. Uh, it was very popular on weekends for people to take the train to Moss Beach and collect all these things, you know. In those days, they could kill them. Today, we can't. So we have to look at them in the water, but they just took them home and, I don't know what the, I guess they ate some of them. <laughs> and this is the what it looked like on a busy day in Moss Beach. They taxed all of the passenger equipment was full on most Sundays. 
uh, only excursionists and whatnot. Later, the railroad was having a hard time competing with trucks, buses, and jitneys. In 1918, they purchased two of these vehicles from commercial cars companies built by Meister and company who built trucks in Sacramento. They had a Buddha motor. Uh, the engineers around it said it didn't stop very well. It was kind of leaky and noisy, but it, it was better than having no train to the uh, co-sires. That was the alternative. So that ran from 1918 through 1920. There's the southbound at Moss Beach showing the beautiful uh, <coughs> Liberty Bond poster. It may have been towards the end of World War I. And there's our famous manure car. <laughs> It uh, derailed near Granada, and of course, people, it's curiosity. And uh, again, I, I, manure was, was more popular among farmers, I guess. Uh, this is the stylized view of Granada. The famous architect Daniel Burnham planned it. Uh, and gave it all kinds of European uh, where the streets were semicircle, each one higher than the other, so everyone could have a view of the ocean. Stations. This was uh, locomotive number 50, which was changed to eight. It was 50 when they got it because that was the number of the previous railroad. <clears throat> it came from the EB&A Old Stone Company who had the quarries. This one came from Monterey County. And again, these are two of the three very beautiful electric coaches. Uh, electric, uh, they were supposed to be interurban cars that were self-powered. But never, they never got motors. This was a Granada main depot. And this one is reportedly a house today. I've seen it, and I think it is. That's true. Uh, there was also a building like that that was uh, a real estate office that had the same roof lines. So I'm going with the depot. but. South Granada uh, Freight Depot and the railroad yards. This was going to be, first named Balboa, this was going to be the car shops uh, and powerhouse. They had a lot of metal I-beams and structural metal delivered uh, from ships to this point where they were gonna build their shops. And they kept it on the books for a long time. They, they, it was just sitting there for probably through 1914 or something like that. And they finally got rid of it. And this part is another why, because this was at this point, this was the end of the line. First Pedro, and then here, the, this is to turn the locomotives and cars and the temporary engine house. <clears throat> Another shot of Granada Freight Depot. Looks like they're really building something. Got lumber. So that was a good sign for the railroad. This is the famous North Granada Depot. It's the Chinese restaurant last time I looked. Does anybody know anything? It's changed. It's still? It's an American California food comfort food. food. It is? Yeah, it's uh, a comfort uh, food restaurant. Oh, okay. Asian fusion. Asian fusion. Um, this car is car 1409, possibly. It's the identical. This this is one of the five built by Holman. 
Uh, this was 1404, built by Hicks, and was a very beautiful car. And I did have very plush seats and much more finely appointed than the Coleman cars. And it could be why there's a crowd trying to get on that car. I'm not sure. <laughs> Granada Depot towards the end of the railroad. It's uh, not too many homes built. In uh, 1908, the Ocean Shore reached Half Moon Bay, October 12th. The first train, and this this one here is the same has the same look uh, outfit as the other one. I think I'm thinking John B. Rogers is my guess, and I think that's Harry Delmez. Um, I don't know the others. There he is again. <clears throat> this is the freight depot, Half Moon Bay same day waiting for the first train half moon bay depot later with the moscone uh, hotel uh, like they transport passengers from the depot to the hotel this is a white motor car being tested on the ocean shore um, it was built for Verde Tunnel and Smelter Railroad in Arizona, and it's being tested, and it's full of people taking the ride, and the white company was testing it on the ocean shore as well as trying to sell it to the ocean shore, sell one like it. The ocean shore decided to go with Meister. Um, the Meister cars looked better more modern. This is the Arlita Depot. Uh, I think I saw an ad somewhere where this is now for sale for a million and a half or something. <laughs> Jim, do you, Jim, is that near? <laughs> I thought, yeah. <laughs> well, they've, they've done a lot of work to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is it in the 70s with uh, uh, the last engineer, Adolf Siegel, <coughs> pointing to the depot. At Arlita, where the depot was, is the last Y on the line uh, on the Northern Division. This was a pretty big one. It could hold the whole train like this. <coughs> when they got to pass Afton Bay, they had to turn the trains or at least turn the engine. Um, so they would turn the train at Half Moon Bay and they'd back it down nine miles to Tanitas Creek. So the people who sat in the observation car uh, didn't like it much. They were facing the face into the wind with no windshield. Uh, kids liked it. This is a Purisima Creek trestle, a pretty rare shot because it's not much on Purisima town or creek or um, they had a small uh, platform, no, no depot at Purisima. This one is a family shot showing the Lobitos Depot, an old postcard that somebody had tended the roof, so it must have had a red roof. There's a little bit about this guy, I forgot his name. He built the depot. And Lobitos, of course, uh, failed to boom, as we know. The end of the line on the northern division is Tenditas Glen. Uh, this shot is about 1909. Shows a stagecoach leaving for uh, San Gregorio Pescadero. <clears throat> and eventually swung to connect with the other uh, southern division. All this lumber down here, if you can see it, is stacked up. This lumber came from the 
tearing down of the Florida Street Depot, I mean, uh, trestle in San Francisco. And they built this Tanitas Creek bridge with it. This is the trestle back here going across Tanitas Creek. <clears throat> and the other side, the tracks ended here. That was the end of the line. And they graded further down towards Palmer Gulch. You can see the grading. And uh, this is the stagecoach, the, uh, some of the little buildings that were there. They had a saloon, of course. Um, so this was the permanent end of the line. From it, it was, they didn't think it was when they built this, but this was it. This is uh, taken by my great uncle. This is stagecoach at Tanitas Creek, uh, the two ocean shore trainmen. Uh, one of them maybe have Johnny Kerr, I'm not sure. I can't tell. Anyway, this is the end of the line, and that stagecoach is headed for Swanton eventually. Uh, this is the trestle after completion. This is a trestle after abandonment. <laughs> See part of it. And you can still, when I was a kid, there were still, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, bents, the uh, complete bents sitting down here. <clears throat> then this uh, trestle continued over here. The tracks went up. There's the depot, Tanitas Depot. And it continued along here, along this block. And Levitos would be up in that area. So this is the line. And then it, it had a few hundred yards of track on the other side of the trestle, and that was the, the end of the northern division. There's a later view of the famous depot at Tunitas. It burned, I think, in 67. So people built a fire to keep warm in it, and that was, uh, that was the end of it. There's a group of people at the end of the line at Tanitas. The train has already been turned around and is heading north. Mm -hmm.